Hey guys, Justin here with J-Heart Model Works. Was about to do the window masks on the Audi R8. Um, as I've mentioned before, the ones that I had ordered from Zoom On never came in. Did speak with them and they finally were like, yeah, we agree, it's never gonna show up. We I think it's lost in tra transit as well. So they did give me a refund, but I'm currently without window masks. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my own. And I thought, you know, there might be somebody out there who doesn't know how to make these and maybe looking for help on them. And I know there's a bunch of tutorials out there on how to do this from other guys, but I haven't seen anything recent, so they're probably like buried into the YouTube archives and history. So I thought maybe we'll just go ahead and do another quick tutorial on doing your own window masks. So let's go ahead and get this turned around and we'll get started. We're gonna be working with our clear parts here. There's gonna be a lot of sliding things around and moving things and pressing things. So to keep the glass from getting scratched up, the first thing we wanna do is put down a really soft cloth. This is a Tamiya polishing cloth. You can also use like a microfiber or even a soft towel. Now we're gonna need a permanent marker. We're also gonna use some tape. I like to use Tamiya tape for this. We also need a cleaner that will remove the permanent marker. I'm gonna use some of this UMP airbrush cleaner as I still have a couple of bottles of it. Isopropyl alcohol does an excellent job of this as well without harming the plastic and is a readily available alternative. Another tool that we're gonna to need is gonna be a hobby knife, a scalpel, or some other form of cutting tool. We're also gonna use some cotton buds and I like these cosmetic cotton buds. I get like 800 of them off Amazon for 10 bucks. I like them because the cotton is very tightly wound around the stick, so there's not a lot of stray fibers. If you look at how the light hits the plastic, the outer edge is kind of hazy. That area needs to be painted black. The first thing we want to do is we want to take our permanent marker and we want to mark a line all the way around the inner edge of the hazy area, where the hazy section meets the clear section. This needs to be done on the inside of the clear part. The reason we're doing this is so that when we lay the tape down over the clear part, we're gonna have a dark line where the edge of the clear part should be. I've seen people use pencil for this, and pencil, in my opinion, doesn't show up well underneath the tape. Once we have our outline marked, we're going to go ahead and lay down some Tamiya tape to cover the inside of the clear part. And as you can see, as soon as we start laying that tape down, you can see our marker very clearly through the tape. From here, we're going to go back with our permanent marker and we're going to copy the line on top of the Tamiya tape. Once we have copied our outline onto the tape, we're gonna pull the mask off the plastic. We're gonna start with the bottom most layer of tape. While peeling the mask off, we need to be very careful and take our time. Do not pry hard against the plastic or you can snap your parts in half very easily. We wanna lift the mask up a little bit at a time. Make sure you're holding the part firmly and move your fingers up closer to the edge of the tape as you remove it to help brace the part. We have transferred our tape to the cutting mat and now we want to cut away the outside parts of the mask. I know I didn't mention it as part of the materials, but if you have sections that are straight lines like we have on the sides, using something like a ruler as a cutting guide is a great help in getting nice clean cuts. I don't like cutting the mask while it's in place on the plastic. It would be easier to leave it in place and cut along the line and just remove the outer section. This would prevent us the hassle of lining the mask back up on the clear part later. But cutting on the mask while it's on the plastic always has the chance that we will cut the plastic in a way that it doesn't fill properly with paint and you get a bright scratch line around the black border.
Before we put the mask back in place, we want to clean off the marker from the plastic. For this, we're going to use some UMP airbrush cleaner and cotton buds. Again, if you don't have UMP airbrush cleaner, it is kind of a specialty item. You can use isopropyl alcohol for this just as well. I like to get my cotton bud wet and then wipe most of it off on like my hands and my jeans so that it doesn't just ooze and run everywhere when I start to clean up. And then just gently rub the part with the cotton bud until all the marker's gone. I'm then going to give the whole part a nice rub down with my soft cloth to make sure it's nice and dry. If you want, before moving on to the next step, you can clean the part with either Windex or some Dawn dish soap and water. The most nerve wracking part of this process, which we have to do twice, is removing the mask from the plastic because there's a chance we can break it. But in my opinion, the hardest part is getting the mask back on and lined up correctly. I like to start on one corner, along the straightest edge possible, get that corner in place and line the mask up along that straight edge, and then we want to carefully smooth the mask down, moving out from that edge, trying to prevent any wrinkles or bubbles in the mask. Once we get the mask down, we then want to go all the way around the edges and make sure that they're nice and flat. We are back from the spray booth and have all of our black paint sprayed and now we want to very carefully remove the mask and see how everything came out. If the modeling gods have favored us, we'll have a nice clean black border around our rear window. You'll also notice I did add tape to the outside of the window. This just prevents us from getting any kind of paint over spray on the outside glass. A final quick clean and we can examine our results. The process won't be nearly as clean as a custom fit, die cut professional mask, but it definitely gets the job done. And that's going to wrap up this quick tip video. I hope you enjoyed it, maybe found something useful. As always, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll catch you on the next one. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comment section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comment section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.